Hi, welcome to another BiteWiser.com Inkscape tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make a, a logo. I know I've done it in the past, but uh, that one is kind of generic and real easy to make. Uh, well, this one is still going to be real easy to make, but I, to me, I think it's going to look a lot cooler. So, um, before we get started, uh, you'll need to get the, I believe it's pronounced fork uh, font. You can get that here at this link here at fontsquirrel.com. And you also need the Fearless font, which can also be located right here. Uh, and again, that's at fontsquirrel.com. So uh, let's get started. Uh, first, what we can do is we'll, ne uh, well, we need to go and set up our document properties, and we'll set our width to we'll say 800 pixels, and uh, we'll, we'll set our height to 600. And I always like to make the border on top of the drawing and turn off the shadow and okay very good now let's go grab our text tool and we'll just go you know make a space there for our text and uh, as you can see I already had the fearless stuff selected when I was working on this earlier but I don't want to do that right away I want to go and find uh, if it'll let me scroll <laughs> if it'll let me scroll uh, hold on a second here Okay, let's find the fork, 4K or whatever you want to call it. Um, and we'll put in the uh, name of the company that we're going to be uh, dealing with. And this is a made up company. I have no idea if there's a company like this. And if there is, it's purely coincidental. But uh, I'll call it Bear Claw. And uh, it's pretty small right now. I'm just going to make that black so we can see it. Press Control Shift and click on this diagonal arrow here and we'll just kind of make it bigger and uh, let's go to object line distribute and we'll uh, set that relative to the page and center that uh, horizontally within the page or I guess on the vertical axis it says um, next thing that I want to do is uh, you want to set that to an object you want to do an object to path on it um, that way you can go and press Control shift g and ungroup them so you get each one of these characters by itself you know, it's, each one is its own element and I'm gonna select the EAR and the CLA and what I'm gonna do there is press Control shift and I'm gonna shrink these down just a little bit uh, Control shift and uh, click on this arrow here and drag it down just a little bit and uh, this is where we need to go and make a, a guide. So we'll click up here on the ruler, ruler area and drag down. And all we need right now is for this, uh, for our text just to all, you know, get even along this, this line here. So I'm going to grab these two guys here. And I'm going to press Control, click to grab them, and then bring them up and then they'll just kind of lock on to that guide and now I'm going to go and select all these guys press control and then I'm going to click on them and drag them up and as you can see they want to lock right on there and that's what we wanted so now we can hover up above our guide it turns red hit the delete button to get rid of it we don't need it anymore now now what I'm going to do I'm going to grab this B and I'm just going to press the right arrow and just move it over until it looks good until it looks like it's at about the same distance away from the letters as the rest of them are and eh, I'm gonna press alt and right and just kinda make it get a little closer that looks good and I'm gonna do the same thing with this guy except left so once you get close you wanna you know fine-tune that spacing and that's when you press alt and then your arrow buttons and that looks good so now I'm gonna go select all of them go to path and perform a union on them so it's one big old piece of text there only it's not text anymore it's an actual object we'll make sure that's centered uh, actually make sure that's centered now and uh, what we can do now is we want to duplicate that guy so press control D and just change them to a different color temporarily and let's just make sure yeah okay just want to make sure that I had one before I went ahead 
Now what we can do is go grab this ellipse tool or circle tool and go make a uh, let's change the color of that guy so we can see some sort of uh, ellipse like this. Click on this guy again so that it brings up the rotate arrow here. And I want to rotate this guy just a little bit and bring him over here. Well, that might have been too much rotation. But I want it something like that. Very good. Now let's do an object to path on that circle so that that way we can do a uh, intersection of the duplicated guy and the circle and uh, so click on your uh, your text there your duplicate text this blue and press shift and click on the circle now or ellipse and perform a I think we want to do intersection here yeah only I really did this out of order uh, what I want to do you can press control Z to go back first thing that you want to do is go and do a dynamic offset on this guy here and we want to bring him down just a little bit uh, that's too much just a little bit just like that something like that's pretty good and we got to do an object to path on him and just for the heck of it let's see okay there's no groups in there yeah so that's one big thing that's good okay now let's go back and we'll draw our ellipse again. Do an object to path. Click on him once when he's already selected. And then let's rotate that guy just like that. And bring him over a little bit. Okay. Now we'll press shift while, while this ellipse is uh, selected. Press shift and select the text and then we'll go up to path and do an intersection and there that looks a lot better now only if we're we're really just getting started now um, what we want to do now is uh, I want to change this color here and it's so we can just go and click on this uh, color box over here for fill and then that brings up this uh, area over here and I want to do a linear gradient and it's I'm going to want to edit that and the first color that I want I'm going to want some sort of dark green so, well actually you know that looks pretty good I'm going to do a linear gradient of that edit and I'm going to go in and select this guy that is the alpha value is turned all the way down so that means it's completely transparent at that point I'm going to crank that back up all the way and uh, I'm going to set that color to black. Now I'm going to change the direction of that gradient by going over here, selecting this node here that designates the start of the uh, gradient, bring it down here, and uh, let's scoot on over here, grab the end of the gradient and bring them up. And pr I'm going to press control so that it is a nice straight line there. I'm holding down control this whole time so you can see it kind of snaps in uh, certain angle increments I don't know what but that looks good now I'm gonna want to change the color of this guy here and uh, colors that go good with green uh, well could be quite a few of them but I'm thinking yellow right now and so I'm gonna set up a linear gradient here for this guy and uh, I'm gonna First, make them yellow. Let's set up the linear gradient, and uh, let's let's just temporarily move this guy. Something like this, and we're not going to end there, so don't worry about that. It looks kind of crummy right now, but okay. Uh, the, I'm going to want to edit this guy, and it's it's really a lot of yellow, and I want to make that a little more greenish but still keep it yellow and maybe make that a little paler yeah I want to keep this right along this line here so it's not getting any of that black in there because this green is already black enough it's, it's real dark and so we want something to lighten it up so that yellow is good uh, you know I want to change this gradient here and I want to make that a radial gradient rather than a um, than a linear gradient. I'm going to move it all the way down here towards the edge 
of uh, where that ellipse was. And uh, I'm going to turn it on an angle here. And I'm just going to modify where this glow is coming from. Something like that's good. I want to move it right over here though. Just because I do. Not for any particular reason. Um, and what I would do next is this is starting to look pretty decent, um, but I think we still need some more color here in the in the yellow. So I'm going to go and edit this guy, and I like the yellow here. However, what it fades into is a bright yellow, and I don't like that. I don't want it to be any kind of yellow. In fact, I want it to be kind of huh, red. So I'm going to make it like that, maybe a little bit lighter. Okay, kind of like that. Kind of gives it a, a, a real brownish color and it makes it look kind of golden. Uh, it, it might be a little bit dark here so we can just adjust that by making our yellow extend out further by pulling this out. And same thing over here, we can just kind of drag that and you can see it getting lighter just a little bit. And that's starting to look pretty, pretty decent I think. Um, the last thing that I, I'm going to do is, that just can't be all of the logo, that's just, there's not enough there to it. So, uh, we're going to go grab our text tool again, and go make another text area. And this time, this is when I want that fearless uh, font. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of things that seem like it would go with a bear claw kind of theme. and. Uh, what I'm thinking is that maybe, maybe uh, uh, boating or forestry or something. Yeah, let's we'll, we'll say boating. So let's type in boating, and you obviously can't see it here. There you go. And that looks pretty lame when it's uh, <laughs> real small like that. But we're gonna make it a little bit bigger. And uh, I'm gonna go and make this on an angle so it looks like it's like wow, boating or you know something like that, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and you can see here that we have a problem because uh, this dark green is making it really hard to see the rest of the word boating. Uh, so what we want to do is, well, <laughs> we're going to need to make a, a duplicate of this, only a little bit larger to go behind the boating but above uh, the bear claw green color. So before we do that, what you want to do is object to path and do a control shift G so that you can make these all their own element and that way you can do a union on them so it's just actual stuff that you can, uh, so you can actually apply a dynamic offset to its uh, duplicate which we're going to duplicate it so control D and uh, we'll make this guy white, so let's just go into here, white and press the page down button on your keyboard and now we can go to path dynamic offset and you can see the little node right here let's drag that up just a little because just a little bit makes it do a lot and uh, trying to bring it down uh, yeah, I don't want to bring it down that much just a little more yeah, very little mouse movement does it an awful lot there so there you go. Um, this looks like a, a pretty good uh, logo. We can uh, press uh, Alt, Shift, and then click this so that you get what's behind the boating there. And you also have the black boating selected. Let's just move that up a little bit. And Oh, OK. It's not wanting to move very well, but let's move it up so it seems like it's a little more included with the rest of the logo. And I think we're good. So um, that's just another quick and easy logo that you can make. Um, I don't know that it's quite Web 2.0-ish, but you know, it, it's something different. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy this.
See you soon.